I'm sitting here with Angela Christlieb, the director of Naked Opera. Welcome to the festival. Thank you. It's the first day of the festival. How are you doing? How did you experience the festival so far? Did you actually see much of it? <laughs> this is my press attaché. <laughs> She's bringing me a cup of coffee. <laughs> actually, it's not, it's not my first time in Berlin Film no. Festival because I lived in Berlin for 20 years. Now I live in Vienna. So I know Berlin Ali very well. And but it's my first time I'm having a film here, so it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Quite what exciting, can I say? I guess. It's very exciting. I always wanted to have a film here. Usually I work on films uh, for other people, and now I'm having a film. No, I haven't seen much. I just saw the Panorama Office. That's it okay. so far. <laughs> and you? <laughs> well, I've been working here the last week, so... <laughs> okay. Um, how did you get to, to make this documentary. I mean, you said you lived in Berlin, then now you're living in Vienna. The documentary is set in <laughs> Luxembourg. How did you get there? <laughs> I know, this is an interesting question. <laughs> Actually, I moved from Berlin to Vienna and there um, I was working on another film and then I, I met uh, Buddy Ming, the producer from uh, Amor Fu, which is the production company of this documentary. and. They actually are based in Vienna and in Luxembourg, both. Mm -hmm. So they're producing Austrian films and Luxembourg films. And she told me about the project and she sent me the synopsis and I wrote it and I'm like, wow, this is great, this is amazing. I was just really all overwhelmed. I'm like, I want to see this film and it's done. And then later she, they were looking for a director and she asked me and I said, yes, okay doing it and so I moved from Vienna to Luxembourg and we were like shooting in Luxembourg and we were shooting in Vienna, Berlin and Venice and then I moved back and forth between Vienna, Luxembourg and Berlin. <laughs> so. How long did you stay in Luxembourg? How long did the shooting take? Um, the shooting took two months. Mm -hmm. I moved from Vienna to Luxembourg and then we were shooting two months and then I stayed there um, almost seven months because we were editing there we had to edit the film there so that's a long time it's a long time <laughs> Luxembourg is a small country <laughs> yeah and I mean the production firm was the one who said we want to make this documentary about Mark um, how did they get to know him I mean um, it was not the production actually it was Philippe Reimer who is uh, a Luxembourg guy and he works for Amofu in Luxembourg and he met Mark in Berlin in the opera and <laughs> Where else? they met <laughs> each other in the, in the Don Giovanni opera and they found out they're both, um, I repeat it, and then they found out they both love opera and they both are from Luxembourg and they have the birthday on the same day and then they start talking and Philippe found it fascinating and so he started to write a screenplay together with another writer, Patricia Furst and it's actually his idea, I have to say. It's Philippe's idea and he, when we were shooting, he was there. Um, so. Sometimes I had the feeling that it can be quite challenging to work together with Mark. How did you experience that? I mean, this can also be a source of great inspiration and can be very fertile. I mean, thinking of Werner Herzog and Klaus Kinski, for example. <laughs> How did you experience that with Mark? <laughs> I actually thought about this a lot. <laughs> Give me a gun. <laughs> um, how can I explain this? I mean, he can be a very nice guy, but he can be also very complicated. And it actually was, he, he always thought it's his film. He tried to control the film nonstop and he told to tell me what to shoot. But I told him what to shoot, so it was, it was a little bit difficult mm. and he refused many things what I asked him to do so and then after a while I really thought okay this film is also about power and uh, it's a power game it's a power game between him and me and him and the team because he loves power games he loves power games with other people so it was a power game with him and me and after a while I mean I never wanted to be in the documentary never ever <laughs> But then it was the most interesting scenes because he, when he lost control, he almost never lost control 
except a few times when he was mad. And so I put it in the film, and people loved it so much, so we put more of it in, yeah. Hmm. That's why the film became more levels than just a documentary. Yeah, I have to say, this tension, you could really feel this tension between you sometimes in <laughs> certain scenes. Yeah. But I also think that that were scenes that were quite interesting because I asked myself watching this, is this still documentary actually? If you can hear and see someone saying stuff like, why don't you go to the window and write the postcard there and stuff like that. What would you say? Is this still documentary? Is this already fiction? Are you revealing just that documentary is also fiction? Actually, I mean, I have done other documentaries and I always like to be in between genres, which is very difficult to do, especially getting funding for this. And this documentary, it was clear from the beginning it will be a mix between documentary and fiction because there are like two people, there's like the real Mark and the staged Mark. So for me, I always wanted to do a documentary which is in between because it's about him as a real person and it's about him and his, his illusionary world. And there are a few scenes that are staged because it was his idea. So we staged it like a fiction movie and then on the other side it was, it's not a fiction movie. And I sometimes, I totally run out of um, what to tell him because he always expected, where's my text, where's my text? And I'm like, Mark, this is no fiction, this is documentary. <laughs> So it's a mix, a mix between both, and I play with it. Hmm. I play with reality, and this is what I'm, what's most challenging about. Talking about his fictitious own world, I mean, sometimes I also have the feeling that he really lives sort of in his own imaginary world that he created for himself, all this Don Giovanni in his life, hmm. that he sort of tries to get away from his re reality, from his real life. I mean, he's quite mm. sick. Did you also have this feeling or, I mean, did you have the feeling that he's actually playing every day or did you have the feeling that sometimes you could actually get through the real mark, like get through to the real mark? The scenes we put in the film where we got through the real mark, they're all in. When he started losing his temper, he actually lives a very ordinary life. I mean, he Seriously? Works. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like that in the movie. I mean, he has a job. He, he works for, for a company as a, as a big boss and he like hires people. This is his normal life. He just escapes his normal life for the weekends. And he's not, I mean, he's not in a dream world. Like I did other movies where people are really in a dream world. He's not, he, he knows what he's doing. So he has just two lives. I mean, he has this ordinary life where he works from nine to five. And on the weekend, he escapes to these opera things. Hmm. They're two different things, so. He's also quite ill. Yeah. But it's never said in the movie what exactly he has. Like his bones are mm. very weak and yeah. it's something with his immune system. He has a very rare uh, illness. It's called sarcoidosis. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what that is. It's, it's a extremely rare Im immune illness. And yeah, I think he got a lot of cortisone when he was a kid and like wrong diagnosis and everything. So that's why his bones are very fragile. And he's, I think he's doing better. It's not like he's dying soon or something. I think he's, he's doing better than he thought, but he has to be very careful. So he's like fragile. I don't know how we're dealing with masses on the Berlin Festival. <laughs> we'll see, because he's really fragile and if he falls, he breaks something. Mm. Sounds terrible, actually. Uh, yeah, I don't want to I mean, switch. I guess that also influences everyday life a lot and also mm -hmm. probably shooting this documentary, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. When we were start shooting, he broke his, he broke his arm and we thought we couldn't even shoot. And then he thought, okay, it's just his arm, it's fine. If he would broke his leg, forget it. So we had to be very careful. And in Venice, for example, on this, on this boat, it was difficult hmm. because he, that's why he's in this um, luxury world, hotel rooms, because they're safe also. And a lot in the car and in his apartment. 
do you think that his illness is also one of the reasons why he tries to escape to this imaginary world when he has the time to? Also, I think it's he tries to do what he can and he tries to do to live it up to its utmost and sure, I mean that's the strength of it. He's not despaired, he's just living living his fun life and this is this is great actually. I think this is also what people like about about him a lot. He just does what he wants. And, um, what was the most well interesting part of shooting this movie with him then? I mean what was the most remarkable scene you remember or the thing that triggered you the most? It was actually the scene where he almost attacked me in, in Vienna. Was it that close that he was always attack, almost he attacked? He was you? angry. He was angry because I sat him in front of an aquarium with penguins in the morning and, <laughs> and I put him in this uh, was heißt Pferdekutsche, in this in this horse horse ride, horse ride thing and then we were expecting Jordan Fox and he hasn't seen him for a while and he was, it was very tenuous because when he gets tired, he gets very angry. So and that was intense. So and I never thought it would be a moment for the movie. I was very exhausted. And I mean, I had to say I have, I always had Philip on the side, Philip the, the writer. He was not only the writer, he was also working in the movie and he was, um, asking Luxembourg questions because I can't speak Luxembourg. So. Mm. so, and he was there all the time, so we were more or less the team. Okay, so it wasn't yeah. you alone with him, but also other people that actually yeah. knew him personally? And yeah, yeah, I mean, it was me and my camera team, and, and Philippe was there all the time, and I had an assistant because I should speak Luxembourgish with him, but I, I just can, so I spoke German, and he speaks every language, so. And yeah, I mean, he's yeah. fluent in German, so, yeah. The most intense moment, there were many intense moments, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> very intense film. <laughs> At the end, we loved each other, I mean, really. He was very happy and he's still, he's very excited. And now we get along very well, I have to say. We're not enemies, not at all. Okay. No, we make fun of this. We, we even make fun of the whole game in it. Mm -hmm. And... This is cool. So. Well, that's quite nice and interesting because sometimes I seriously had the feeling that the tension between you could also lead to a rivalry and that you actually go not out of this as <laughs> friends, exactly, maybe even murder. But it's nice to hear that you actually became friends. Well, friends, not friends, but, but we, yeah, we, we, we are in the same boat. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I mean, he's not very into women, I have to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> he had not so much respect for me as a woman. My cameraman had the better hold <laughs> than me. But um, yeah, we are in the same boat and we know. And of course, yeah, I talked to him a few days ago. He's, he's cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's really happy. And at the end, when he, I mean, he didn't see the final cut, but he saw the version before. He was super happy. I know what he thinks when he sees this, but. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't kill me. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's he's actually very excited. And um, well. you were talking about Jordan Fox. Mm -hmm. Is he actually a porn actor, or is he just an escort person? He's a porn actor. Okay, and did they two like fall in love? And was it really very strong for Mark? It seemed that way in the movie. The was it really that intense for him? It was that intense for him. I mean, he never wanted to show his feelings um, the way I would have loved to see it in the film, but I think you see it anyway. Yeah, they have a bizarre relationship. So <laughs> they still have a bizarre relationship? They still have a bizarre relationship. I mean, we invited Jordan. I don't know if they talk right now or not. I'm not sure. They will be on stage together, so we'll see. Okay. I mean, there's still, it's, it's going on for years, and so it was before we even shot. It's, it's a true story, so we didn't make it up, so. Mm -hmm. 
Because I remember quite vividly this scene when when Mark is in his hotel room and then mm -hmm. you actually invite Jordan mm -hmm. and he gets very furious about it mm -hmm. and very upset and I had the feeling that that was one of the best scenes of the movie yeah. because there you could actually feel that this is Mark just yeah. the way he is. Exactly, yeah. I really like that scene. Yeah, me too. And there should be more of this, but he controlled himself so much in the movie that, I mean, if he would have a making of camera on the side, <laughs> but he controlled himself. He knew exactly what he did all the time, except this time. So, and the first version of the film, it was the only scene like this in the movie and everybody liked it so much. So we put more in. And yeah, that's why I like it too at the end. Mm. I mean, even if I look mean that I'm doing the stream, <laughs> but it's, it was a challenge working with him, I mean, really. <laughs> but did you have the feeling that sometimes you had to be mean to actually get him out of his shell and be himself? Uh, I was not mean, not at all. I, I wanted to have things and he didn't want to give it to me. So no, that was, no. The only way to get him out of his shelf was to irritate him, like inviting pretty young boys and give him a lot of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> that helped. <laughs> I was not mean to him, never. No, no, it was the opposite. Okay. No, I was very nice to him, believe me. <laughs> so. And you were talking about placing him in front of this aquarium with the penguins. Yeah. Uh, who came up with this penguin picture? Was it you or did Mark actually see himself beforehand already as a penguin that's quite vivid he, in his own environment? He has in his apartment, which is really a clean apartment. I mean, it's black and white, it's very clean, but there were three penguin puppets. I'm like, what is this? He was, he was collecting penguins and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So I asked him and then he said, oh, you know, I like these animals because they are like right in their element. And so I thought this is very interesting. And, and then he always like, oh, I want to touch a real penguin. Can you buy me a penguin? I'm like, no, we cannot, but maybe <laughs> we go to the zoo. And he like, ha, ha, ha. And then I did it and then he's like, oh no. So, but I mean, I actually didn't put it in the film. I put it in the credits and it's fine for him. But yeah, it was my idea, of course, because I thought it's a great visual idea, but I, I came up with the idea when he saw he's collecting them. So hmm. and I gave him one for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you shot this documentary and you've also been shooting movies before. Mm -hmm. Were those also documentaries or...? There are also two documentaries. Um, also a little bit, no, I can't compare to this one, but the first one was a movie about um, cinephiles in New York. It's called Cinemania. It's also about movie about people who live in other worlds. And the second movie was also a mix between documentary and an art movie, a fictional film. And so I like to do movies which are not one-to-one -one genre, which are both. Mm -hmm. genre. Like breaking through those classic yeah. genres. And yeah. And are you working on something at the moment? Um, I'm actually writing a fiction film, or like I have a co-writer, she's writing for me, and it would be my first fiction film. How oh, it works, I don't know. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Well, sounds interesting and we are excited to see more from you. Okay. And, um, well, I hope you enjoyed the festival. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the interview and um, have fun in Berlin. Thanks. <laughs>